Hello, and welcome to Vintage Backyard RC. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that 80s inspired intro video because we're in an 80s mood. And to celebrate, we're going to be driving these two vintage Tamiya four wheel drive buggies the Hot Shot and the Super Shot. Now, both of these cars are legends, and they're also two of my personal shelf queens that have been sitting on my shelf collecting dust for over 20 years. I'm tired of looking at them, and I wanted to get out there and drive them and enjoy them. So, we figured we'd bring you this video. Both cars will be using the Silver Can RS540 motor. That's the same motor that we use in all the two-wheel drive buggies, just to keep things consistent from car to car. Now, I know the Super Shot came with a technical motor, but I don't want to put any miles on that. And comparing that motor to a Silver Can, well, it's going to be no contest, so that wouldn't be fair either. And we will also use the same tires that we use on the Super Shot onto the Hot Shot to keep things equal as well. Now, this is a little bit longer than our normal video, I made lots of laps. Uh, I figured I'd show you all the footage because it was really fun. The cars got faster as we went, so I took you guys along for the ride. Also, we're using six cameras on this shoot. That's right, six. That's a lot to thread together. If you guys think that's a little overwhelming, let me know down in the comment section. Otherwise, we're going to roll with it. So let's take a look under the hood. You guys sit back and relax, and uh, I'll see you on the track. Released in April of 1985, the Hot Shot was Tamiya's first off-road four-wheel drive buggy. It was an all-new design. New wheels, new tires, new chassis, body, gearbox, you name it, it was new. The four-wheel drive system featured two separate sealed gearboxes, connected to each other via a hexagonal steel drive shaft. Internally, you'll see a familiar beveled gear differential. Tamiya also utilized bevel gears to transfer power from the drive gears to the output coupler for the drive shaft. It was a fairly unique setup that worked great. The rest of the chassis was fairly unique as well. The two gearboxes were attached to the upper half of the chassis, while a sealed bathtub style lower chassis was bolted to the upper chassis to complete the assembly. This made adjusting anything after the car was assembled a huge pain in the you know what. Space was so limited that you couldn't use a separate battery pack to power the transmitter and servo, a fairly common practice back in the day. So Tamiya included the BEC, or battery eliminator circuit, that allowed you to power the radio off of the main battery. The mechanical speed control utilized these iconic aluminum heat sinks. On the lower side, a swing out fiber battery brace helped stiffen the chassis and gave you access for the main battery pack. The suspension is where things got really wild. They only used two coilover shocks for the entire car. The front shock mounted directly to the lower control arm. And the rear utilized this amazing feat of Tamiya over engineering once again. The one end attached to the chassis, while the other end went through a series of levers to finally end up connecting itself to the rear lower controller. And perhaps the Mia was hanging out at the motocross track yet again, because both shocks had adjustable spring collets to adjust both ride height and shock spring tension. Released in March of 1986, the Super Shot was a hot rodded version of the Hot Shot. Much remained the same from the original Hot Shot, but a few things were simplified for better performance. Obviously, the most notable thing was the mono shock setup was replaced by four conventional oil-filled CVA shocks. These parts were also available separately if you wanted to upgrade your original hot shot. The upgrades did not end there. The Super Shot had a completely redesigned body, gold-plated wheels, in-spike tires, and they included a modified RX540 Technopower motor. This hot rod motor featured 315 GCM of torque at 20,300 RPM, compared to the Silver Can's 200 GCM of torque at only 12,500. So with those four oil-filled shocks be an improvement over the Hot Shot's overly complicated suspension? We're about to find out. Let's hit the track.
Well, that was super fun. The cars were amazing to drive. And once again, I couldn't tell which one was faster until I checked the lap times. So without further ado, the hot shot did it in. 10.72 seconds. That's almost as fast as our Pro Car Top Cat. Man, let me tell you something. What an amazing car. But was the Super Shot faster? We're about to find out. The Super Shot did it in. 10.91 seconds. It's slower than the Hot Shot. I couldn't believe it. I figured with all this fancy suspension it would be faster, but it wasn't. Uh, we did break a few parts. We'll talk about that during the slow motion. And we'll also talk about how the handling characteristics of each car affected the lap times. Let's hit the slow motion and have a chat. First thing I want to say is, don't pay too much attention to that wobbly wheel and the broken bumper mount that happened during the shoot. I know you can't unsee it now. I'm sorry about that. So a real quick handling lesson, basically there's off power steering and on power steering. On power steering is when you're on the throttle, how much steering is available. Off power steering is when you're off the throttle or coasting, how much steering is available. The Hot Shot had so much off power steering that it tried to swap ends when I was off the throttle coasting. Once I got used to that, it actually made the car quicker going through the corner. This is why I think the Hot Shot was quicker overall. It could get through the corner faster the faster an RC car can get through a corner, the faster your lap times are going to be. This difference is most notable when the cars get up on the deck. If you check the overhead camera on the running footage, you can see the hot shot almost spins out when it goes to the apex of that corner. I guarantee you guys, with a spring and an oil change on the super shot, it's going to be faster overall. But in stock form it wasn't. And that's the point of this video, right guys? So what did I break? Well, as mentioned, I broke a wheel hub, just the outer piece of plastic on the Hot Shot, no big deal. And I also broke an upper control arm on the Super Shot. Not really a big deal, those parts are still available, um, so no harm, no foul, it was well worth it. So that's it guys. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. It was fun to shoot. It was great to get these old cars out on the track. Now they go back on the shelf for a while. Once again, I couldn't do this without the full support of my family and my amazing daughter who takes all the video. If you guys enjoyed this, please hit that like button and be sure to subscribe. And as always, rock on.